Hello students. Today we are going to cover the chapter 2 demand and supply from the CACPT course on economics. Now let us see what do we mean by demand. We all would have heard this word millions of times. Somebody has this demand, some politician has these demands, people have that demand. So what do we really mean by it? Now demand for a commodity means the desire. This is something that we all know. But what we probably don't know is that it has to be backed by the ability to pay and that there has to be a willingness to buy it now please note these two important points that there has to be an ability to pay only desiring something or having even willingness to buy does not create a demand i may desire or i may want to buy a plasma tv but if i am not willing to spend money or if i don't have the capacity then there will not be any demand Now let us talk about demand function. Function as we know means that we express a relationship between an independent variable and the dependent variables. So in this case the demand being a dependent variable it depends on a change in the price of the goods, the price of related goods, the income of the customer, his tastes and preferences and on the wealth of the consumer. A change in any of these factors is supposed to impact the demand function it can either lead to more demand or a fall in the demand hence the demand function is expressed as dx is a function of px where x is the commodity and px is price of the commodity ps means price of the related goods which can be substitutes or complements y being the income t as the taste and preferences and w being the wealth of the customer Now let us talk about demand function. Function as we know means that we express a relationship between an independent variable and the dependent variables. So in this case the demand being a dependent variable it depends on a change in the price of the goods, the price of related goods, the income of the customer, his tastes and preferences and on the wealth of the consumer. A change in any of these factors is supposed to impact the demand function it can either lead to more demand or a fall in the demand hence the demand function is expressed as dx is a function of px where x is the commodity and px is price of the commodity ps means price of the related goods which can be substitutes or complements y being the income t as the taste and preferences and w being the wealth of the customer Now let us talk about what is a law of demand. Law of demand states that there is a negative or an inverse relationship between the price and quantity demanded of a commodity over a period of time. Hence, first of all we measure the law of demand over a period of time. It is not at a given time but with reference to a longer duration of time. As per Alfred Marshall who was a noted economist, he mentioned that the greater the amount sold the smaller must be the price at which it is offered in order that it may find consumers or in other words the amount demanded increases with a fall in price and diminishes with a rise in price hence they are inversely related there have to be certain assumptions for this law of demand so the assumptions for the law of demand are that there is no change in the consumer's income there is no change in the consumer's tastes and preferences no change in the prices of other goods or there are no new substitutes that have been discovered and people do not feel that at present the price fall is only a prelude to a further decline in price now if you clearly notice all these factors what are listed here as assumption are actually the fun- factors for the function of the law of demand hence it means that there will not be any change in any of the other factors to ensure that the law of demand works the way we have defined it these are also the various factors that affect demand and they are listed on slide 6 apart from that few other factors are the distribution of income any change in climate or weather what is the state of current business and consumer innovativeness so if the customer is smart then it does not apply let's talk about the law of demand or the demand chart given on slide 7 As per the law of demand when the price rises the quantity demanded falls 
in this chart you see the same thing happening in a graphic form now this chart is only for one product wherein the price of one quantity rises and then the quantity demanded falls if we add lot of other prices we will get a demand schedule or we will get a market demand schedule for that or those products there are couple of reasons or there are couple of rational factors for the law of demand these are substitution effect income effect and additional demand effect now substitution effect means that when price of one commodity falls it will become cheaper as compared to the other commodity and then the consumer will substitute this commodity for the other commodities it is very simple to understand now if we compare tea and coffee and we consume both we know that they are substitutes though they are not perfect substitutes but when the price of tea falls normally we can see that people will start taking more of tea and less of coffee because both of them give them the same satisfaction and tea gives the same satisfaction at a lower price the other rational for law of demand is the income effect when price falls a consumer can buy more at the same price if his income remains fixed hence his purchasing power increases and therefore he demands more of the quantity or more of that product for which the price has fallen the third rational is additional demand when the price falls for a commodity people who could not afford it earlier can now afford it hence the more demand is created for that commodity let us now talk about some of the exceptions to the law of demand the first is conspicuous goods or veblen effect now conspicuous goods are those goods which carry a prestige or a snob value hence people feel proud when they own these goods for example diamonds or designer clothes when price of diamonds rises people would tend to buy them more because then they can show or they can have more prestige attached to the same good the next is giffen paradox sir robert giffen who was an economist he found that similar to conspicuous goods the quantity demanded for inferior products also increases when the price rises this happens because the person who is consuming inferior goods he starts consuming them more as he cannot afford the other better goods when the price rises let us say a poor man has got 100 rupees and he consumes rice and say ragi for 50 rupees each now these both of them they need to be consumed in a certain quantity to help him curb his hunger if the price of ragi rises he would be able to afford less of ragi but due to this he will not be able to get his stomach full hence what he would do is because price of ragi rises so he would start consuming more of ragi because even at the risen price he can get more ragi as compared to rice hence the price of ragi rises still it being a given good the quantity demanded of ragi also rises the next exception is conspicuous necessities things like tvs coolers etc which have now become necessities over time so their quantity still increases even though the price keeps on rises the another exception for the law of demand is future expectations about price in case the price rises if people expect that it will further rise still the demand increases for example gold and the quantity demanded of gold has been rising irrespective of the rise in the price reason being people expect that it will further increase and hence it will become beyond their reach another exception is when consumers become irrational or they make impulsive purchases for example buying a chocolate or buying jewelry or something demand for necessary goods these are the goods which are consumed on a daily basis and are necessities so whether the price rises or falls consumer continues to demand the same quantity irrespective of the price rise and also in case of speculative market like stocks and shares when prices rise consumers tend to buy them more again expecting that price in future will be further more there are two concepts of expansion or increase in demand uh, now expansion in demand means that the demand 
the point of demand moves on the same demand curve if the price falls the quantity demanded expands and there is a downward movement on the same curve whereas the other factors remain constant hence for expansion of demand or expansion in demand we will be moving on the same demand curve that is for different prices there will be different quantity demanded whereas other factors remain same the opposite of that that a price rise and demand falls is called the contraction in demand they are different from increase or decrease in demand because in these two cases the demand curve shifts either to the right or to the left an increase in demand happens when the other factors change say like rise in income or if there is a change in the price of the substitute let us now have a look at elasticity of demand elasticity as we all know means responsiveness it the law of or the elasticity of demand means as to how the quantity demanded will change with respect to a change in the price hence it tries to measure the rate of change in demand as per alfred marshall elasticity of demand in a market is great or small accordingly as the amount demanded increases much or little for a given fall in price and diminishes much or little for a given rise in price hence if the rate of change in price is x and the change or the rate of change in quantity demanded is more than x then we will say that the price elasticity is more and if it is less than x then we say that the price elasticity is less there are other types of elasticities which we will discuss now the other types of elasticity are income elasticity and cross elasticity price elasticity measures a change in the quantity demanded as a result of change in the price income elasticity measures a change in quantity demanded due to a change in income and the cross elasticity measures the change in quantity demanded due to a change in the price of related goods formula for elasticity is price elasticity means percentage of change in quantity demanded divided by percentage change in the price price elasticity is when it is measured on a straight line curve then it is measured at a given point when it is at the center of the demand curve price elasticity will be equal to 1 at the point where the demand curve touches the x axis there it is infinity sorry there it is 0 and where it is touches y axis it becomes equal to infinity hence when the demand curve touches the y axis at that point the elasticity of or the price elasticity of demand is equal to infinity arc elasticity is measured in case of a curved demand curve which is not a straight line curve and it is given by as per the formula that is mentioned remember that the elasticity would always mean a percentage change in the independent variable is always taken as the denominator and the dependent variable which is the quantity demanded is taken as the numerator there are few more things that we would be covering they are income elasticity cross elasticity indifference curves elasticity of supply and many more so keep visiting winningnotes.com